So today is a public holiday here in Switzerland and I don't really have too much to do today. So why don't I just review another one of your underwater films? Coming up. Hi and welcome back to the Underwater Filmmaking School and yet another episode of reviewing your underwater films. Today I will be reviewing a film made by someone you probably already know, Justin aka the Critter Hunter. Justin lives in the Philippines, more precisely in Darwin, and does a lot of macro filming underwater. So he sent me a film, um, one of the movies or one of the clips that he's got on his YouTube channel. So without further ado and without wasting any more time, let's get right into that video. Hey, welcome back to Darwin, where I've been crossing off the dive sites I've been exploring with Finn Snow, and today, we're heading to the other side of Malatapai. Nice intro. Meet Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer is a cuttlefish and probably a broad club cuttlefish. And she's actually really big. There's no macro in this shot. Very cool shot. We saw Jennifer at the very beginning of this dive, just sitting there in the sand in the dark. And Fen Snow is actually filming some tiny little leaf sheep. So I didn't call him over. I just sat there and filmed this little guy on my own. Awesome colors. Girl. Love it. Very cool. She actually let me get pretty close and I got some little close up shots of her face. Mm -hmm. Cute little girl. That's fantastic. Look at the detail. Very cool. Now for Jessica. Jessica is a <laughs> colorful little flatworm, likes to slither around in the sand. <laughs> I love the names Jessica and all the extra info. And I love the way she moves. As she's slithering around, I get to see her little colors, her black fringe. And just like Duty Break, I love finding these guys and filming them. They're the perfect little subjects. Hmm. As I was getting a different angle, this little snaky worm thing just slithered in the way and tried to get underneath Jessica. <laughs> nice. No, I'm sorry you guys, I didn't get the name of this little worm guy. He wasn't around long enough to bother doing research about him. But he was so long, I can't believe how long he was compared to how small. Jessica herself is actually real small, maybe two <laughs> and a half inches long. So you can imagine how small that worm is. I didn't even see it until I reviewed the footage later. Uh, the banded Tazuma shrimp. Or, well, this one's named Gumby. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Very cool. Actually, a regular that I see a lot at Maltapai South. I'm just calling it Maltapai South uh, because it's the south side. There's actually two dive sites here, but really, this is the good dive site at Maltapai. So, this Tazuma shrimp, I always see this colorful plant, and as you can see, it's got the perfect camouflage for blending in with this home. These guys, they come in about every color you can think of. Just depends on the color of their home, and they'll just blend right in to match it. Say hello to Gertrude. <laughs> Gertrude is a razor fish, and they're actually really hard to film during the day. They're real shy, and they don't like to get too close. But at night, she didn't mind. Stephanie is a giant flatworm. I mean, wow. Huge. This thing was probably the size of a plate, probably six inches wide and long. 
technically it's a big nudie break. I don't think it's a Spanish dancer, it's just some kind of flatworm. But mm. although I had to zoom way out to be able to film it, it was another perfect subject. Mm. No, I don't think that's a Spanish dancer there, mate. Hello, Billy. <laughs> I love that one. Really, really good shot. Wow, look at all the detail. Oh wow, that's a fantastic so shot. This dive, I said I'm just going to start ignoring robust ghost pipefish unless it's something unique. And then what's the first thing we find? A unique robust ghost pipefish. Actually, I think this might be a rough snout ghost pipefish, which is a little more rare than the common robust. I know that's a lot of scientific marine biology jargon, and you're probably going to forget it in about three seconds. But the moral of the story is, this guy was awesome, and I didn't want to pass him up. He looked like a piece of hmm. grass floating in the dark. Very cool. And my camera is just naturally attracted to those kind of things. In fact, my lights probably turned on themselves. I didn't even have to turn it on. They knew it was time to go again. I got some amazing detail on little old Jackson, probably because he wasn't that little. Honestly, his whole body was probably about five inches long. Like I said, he looked like a piece of floating grass. I can't imagine an entire lifetime spent just looking like a piece of grass hoping nobody eats you. But I always had to wonder, there's so many turtles around here eating the grass around here. What happens if little Jackson gets eaten by a turtle? I feel like that's <laughs> not the way to go. <laughs> we'll never know. Anyways, here's uh, the Finstow Critter bucket list. And today, although I didn't film it, Finn got to cross off the leaf sheep. So you're going to have to head to his channel and check that out because it's his first leaf sheep and I think he got some amazing footage of those guys. Anyways, Mount Supply never disappoints, and it's one of my favorite dive sites. I can't believe all the footage in this video is from one single dive. Yep, that's really hard to believe. I think I'm getting spoiled. You definitely and are. So, Justin, buddy. That was really fantastic. I immensely enjoyed watching that film. Now, um, there was a bit of a intro beforehand that I didn't cover here, and there is also an outro. Both of these um, were actually filmed on land, so I'm not gonna um, include them into my review. But what I can say about all the shots that were taken underwater is that I really enjoyed them. It's fantastic how much detail you were able to capture um, in these shots. And as I'm, if I'm not mistaken, um, they were all filmed with a Olympus TG6, which is a compact camera. 
Um, and I imagine that you were using a um, macro wet lens in front of the camera to be able to capture all that detail. But in any case, um, it's really, really cool. Um, I love seeing these critters in such detail. Um, and I think that um, your narration is absolutely amazing. The narration, the name calling, the extra info that you give, uh, also the scientific info to each and every one of the individuals and the species that you found throughout the dive makes it really engaging for your audience. Um, and that, even though you don't really have a particular story other than going through the dive, but Doing all that, the narration, the info, the name calling really makes it very entertaining to watch and you kind of want to see and know what is going to happen next. So very well done on that part. I noticed that some of the shots weren't completely in focus. I mean, you had them in focus at one point, but then obviously because the critters, they were moving uh, slightly and you were maybe moving as well with your camera a little bit, they got out of focus. Now. I don't really know how you use your um, focus, what's your focusing technique underwater. I assume that you're using autofocus and especially with all the particles in the water that we saw in some of the shots, the autofocus probably has some trouble actually knowing where to focus on. So some of the shots got um, lost focus and got out of focus throughout the shot, which is not a big thing, but it's something that you might wanna uh, watch out in the, in upcoming videos or upcoming um, shoots that you that you do underwater. I don't know if the TG6 is uh, capable of manually focusing um, while being underwater and inside the housing but if it is maybe try using the manual focus a little bit so you can actually define the point of focus more precisely and particles that will float by the camera and in front of the lens will not distract the focus and will not pull the focus away from your um, main object. Other than that, I don't really have much else to say to that uh, film because as I said earlier on, it really, really is a fantastic piece of underwater film and it really captured my attention throughout the entire film. Um, if I have to give you some more feedback, um, I'd probably say something about the positioning of your lights and your light work. Um, it looked to me like you were filming with one single light, which works fine uh, when we film macro in, in any case. Um, but sometimes it looked like your object just moved out of your lighting and, uh, and therefore the object wasn't really, um, wasn't really lit very well throughout the entire scene that you captured the object. So maybe something that you can try in the future is change from a floodlight to something more um, like a snoot, like this one here where uh, it actually will give you like a more pointed light and you can accentuate um, certain parts of your objects a little better and you can just pinpoint whatever you want to have in the focus um, of your audience. But that's really complaining on a very high level, but something that you might want to pick up and try um, in future videos. Talking about the music, um, I know that this is a piece of music that you use on uh, a lot of your underwater films. Personally, I'm not a big fan of that type of background music, um, but it seems to work for you, so stick with it if that's fine, or maybe try to, um, to just choose another track for one of the future videos that you do. Another thing that I did enjoy a lot is your camera work. I think that you've got uh, a very, very steady way of moving your camera. Your shots look very steady, even though they are macro shots. And I know how difficult it is to get steady macro shots. I don't know whether or not you've been using a tripod for some of these shots or whether they were all handheld, but kudos for capturing them in the way you did. I think that worked very well. I also like the framing. You got different angles, you got different perspectives of the animals that you captured and that worked very well with new storyline and the narration that you were placing on top of the video. One thing that I would probably try to do next time is also include some slightly wider shots. Now, when you show these tiny little critters, Personally, I would actually also like to see the habitat where these critters live. So if they live in a piece of coral, maybe try to shoot um, a wider shot where you can see the entire piece of coral and then go 
into more into the more macro uh, shots where you um, show the details of the specific animals that way people get a bit of an understanding of the environment where they are they also get a bit of a sense of the size of these animals because most of these animals that you shoot they're tiny and because you shoot them in such a macro mode they don't really seem so small so giving people a bit of a perspective to what size they are what environment they're in um, i think is just gonna you know just lift it up that tiny little notch um, again but other than that i don't have anything else to say then absolutely fantastic work mate well done most of these shots they could be actually shown in a tv documentary so Good work, well done, keep up the good work. I really enjoy watching your videos. And for you guys, if you want to see more of Critter Hunter's work, I will link his channel up here in the card uh, section so you can go and check it out and it will also be linked down in the um, video description. Feel free to head over there, say hi from me and check out some of his other amazing videos that he's got in there. And that basically sums it up for today's video guys thank you so much for watching and thank you justin for submitting that video so i can review it here on my channel as i said before it was a pleasure watching and reviewing that video for you now if you have a underwater film that you would like to be reviewed here on the channel by me drop me a message either through facebook here on youtube instagram and i'll be more than happy to uh, watch and review your videos in this series here as well that's it nothing else to say other than stay safe go diving and capture the amazing underwater world i will see you in the next one